Tatagate. This work is tremendous. And I do it for free. I'm not doing it to garner your approval. I'm not doing it for thumbs ups and pats on the back. I'm doing it just because I, this is my, this is part of my to the solution. It's, it's the thing is when John Lamb Lash is wrong, if he is wrong, as I suspect, in certain regards, and who can be perfect? I'm not criticizing the man for not being perfect. What I'm trying to um, is bring awareness, attention. It's just like if there were a leaky pipe in the basement. You don't want it to get flooded. There's a risk of flooding the basement. You hear? And someone's got to make, someone's got to inform the rest of the members of the building. Whatever, the faculty. And the leaky pipe is quite nice. It's quite a fair metaphor, perhaps. Because you see, if John Lamb Lash is wrong, is occasionally, and a lot of times, a lot of times he can detect his own errors, which I commend him for. I, yeah, here, here, very good. It's um, I've been noticing that happening a lot more, a correction of his own errors and of his own speaking. You know, putting forth claims and then going reviewing those claims, saying, "Well, I made claim A, B, C, D, E, but uh, B and D, those claims." are insufficient or they're inaccurate or they're partial partially true which is not uh, adequate it's not good enough to be partially true if you're going to make statements and um, the thing is a lot of it involves using your imagination he puts forth prepositions And it's up to you to use your imagination to conceptualize them or to visualize these observations or these parts of the narrative. Okay? Now, visualization and imagination are fair enough. However, this is one area in which I feel most discipline to in attendance. It's not just attending to what Rigpa does, attending to how your attention works. That is a significant part of it, yes. It is also attending to the creature. Now, I don't necessarily like leashing creatures this is one exception. The dragon of imagination. The dragon of your own imagination. If you want a visualization. Have you ever seen that movie? The never ending story? And how the kid rides on this flying serpentine mammalian creature in this imaginary fantasy land. This vivid world of imagination that's kind of like your pet dragon it's your imagination that free as it wants to be this is the one creature you must leash now you don't have to have a short leash you don't have to pin it down as some folks do. Some people never let their imagination run about. And I suppose who needs to be 
perfectly disciplined about everything at all the time. Yes, you can unleash the beast and let the dragon roam where the dragon wishes if to roam. Let the Rome go where they may. on those free and wild searches which help it can go pretty far you can go to any planet any dimension with the power of your imagination but the question is are you going to go there with all your faculties intact are you going going to go there with lucid perception of what you're seeing you know, every night when you sleep you go into dreamland and um, there is uh, something about your imagination there, but also there's what you feed your imagination, which includes all of the um, the television, the YouTube, and the Odyssey, and the bit shoot that you watch, that you allow yourself to watch. It feeds your imagination. The dragon gobbles up the images from the computer and the television. Your dragon gobbles it up, and then when those images aren't available, such as when you sleep or when you daydream, it goes and runs off and creates those images again, because it's addicted to those fantasies or to imagining in, in those lines. Anyway, as you let your dragon go and imagine here and there, like you might let your dog run off. Eventually you bring your back, you bring back the creature to the leash. And it might have um, the prize of the hunt, it might have a little morsel for you as a gift, it might gift you with these wonderful notions and thoughts and dreams and images. of which of those are genuine treasures and which of those that the dragon just picked out of the garbage picked out of the rubbish picked out of the trash heap the junk yard because not every product of imagination is worth your attention not everything you imagine is lucid and coherent especially if you lack discipline for your imagination in the first place like what can you really do and where can you truly go and here's where i tend to agree with lash is that women have a harder time leashing the dragon in fact they many of them tend to detest putting any kind of leash on the dragon and this is how they, perhaps maybe I'm just spitballing. This is perhaps how they tend to feel more confident because um, they allow their imagination to give them whatever certainty they need. Like, oh, I've done my research. I know what I know. I believe what I believe. Because it's true. that I mean to give women any particular direct criticism. You might find this particularly odd anyway.
All right. You end up with more than you can handle. And you can talk it down. My lack of skill as a writer. When it comes to speaking, period. You're not going to please everyone. Especially if you have unpleasant things to say. And you think that I'm in a mood. And you think that whatever you want to think. Agonizing over this. Or if I am agonizing, it is aside from this. Yes, I would like to have an audience. And to, most, to some degree, I do. And for that little audience, I'm well received. All right. But I want to see it impact you. Not because I'm obsessed with myself, but because, uh... <laughs> well, with whatever's going on. Sort of losing lucidity here, losing elegance. upset me is when I see that your attention and your imagination seems too heavily prompted and guided by what both the mainstream and the alternative media provide you with in terms of inspiration. That you seem to draw more in inspiration from these sources than you realize. You perhaps think of yourself as somebody, oh, I, I don't need to be inspired. Yet you read things about uh, the vaccine, and about Ukraine, and about Afghanistan, and you're there trying to figure it out. Such as how um, George Floyd, okay, yes, uh, the guy that was in the video, Chauvin, had a widow's peak, and the guy that went to tribal trial, Chauvin, had no widow's peak. And it does look like a totally different guy, really. things it kind of tests the awareness yes in general like can you tell that there's just a look-alike actor there are two look-alikes and one is substituted for the other <laughs> 